Number 22, we are looking for parallel flawed reasoning. So let's look at the argument, figure out the logical skeleton of the argument and why it's flawed. And then we can look for the answer choice that matches that exact same flawed logical skeleton. So in this case, the argument says that Devin has never been kind to me and he's never offered me help or companionship. So therefore, the conclusion is that since he doesn't meet any of these criteria for friendship, well, the conclusion should say, if this was a good argument, it would say, therefore, he's not my friend, right? He's never been kind. He's never offered help or companionship. So therefore, since he doesn't meet any of these criteria for friendship, he must not be a friend of mine. But what does it say? It goes a step further. It says, therefore, he must be my enemy. It goes to the opposite extreme. That's the flaw here. We're jumping from one extreme to the next. In other words, just because someone isn't your friend, okay, great, we've proven that. He doesn't meet this criteria for being your friend. That doesn't mean he's your enemy. He could just be neutral, right? Meaning somebody on the other side of the planet that I've never met before has never been kind to me and has never offered me help or companionship. That just means I haven't met them yet. That doesn't mean they're my enemy, right? So the flaw here is jumping from one extreme to the other. Just because someone is showing evidence that they are not a friend doesn't mean that they are an enemy. It just means they might be neither. They might be neutral, right? So that's what we want to look for in the answer choices. Someone or something is evidently not X, so therefore they must be the opposite of X, right? We're jumping to the other extreme. So let's look for an answer choice that does that. Remember, we always want to simplify the skeleton as much as possible. So in this case, we can encapsulate the flawed logic in just that one sentence. We have evidence that something or someone is not X, not a friend in this case, not X. So therefore that thing must therefore be the opposite of X, right? Not a friend, so therefore must be an enemy. Something like that is gonna be the right answer. So let's take a look at the answer choices. A says that in order to be an officer of this club, you have to be a member of two years standing or be a committee member or have special qualifications. You need to have one of those three things. And then it says, therefore, Evelyn can't be an officer because she's only been a member for one year and she's not a committee member. Now, this is a flawed argument because how do you know she doesn't have the third thing, right? It says in order to be an officer, you have to have one of these three things, right? A or B or C. Evelyn can't be an officer because she doesn't have A or B. Well, how do you know she doesn't have C, right? So this is a flawed argument. However, it's not flawed in the same way that we are looking for, right? We're looking for a flawed argument that says somebody is not X, so therefore they must be the opposite of X, right? So A might have been the answer if it said something like, you know, Evelyn can't be an officer of this club, right? Because she doesn't meet any of these criteria. So therefore she must be an officer for the enemy club, for the other club that's the enemy of our club or something like that, right? So it's not doing that, right? It's just saying, well, she's not an officer because she doesn't meet the criteria. It's just messing up what the criteria is. So it's a slightly different flaw. Doesn't match what we're looking for. B says that in order to thrive, this plant needs to be located in a nice sunny spot and it needs to be watered on a regular basis. So since those two things are not true, since this spot is not sunny and since I didn't water this plant regularly, that explains why the plant is not doing so well. This seems like a pretty good argument. I can't find anything wrong with this. So not only does it not match the skeleton that we're looking for, it actually seems to make sense, right? We're looking for a flawed argument. This is pretty good. It says in order to thrive, the plant must have these two things. This plant doesn't have these two things. So that might explain why the plant therefore is not thriving. It seems like pretty decent logic. It's certainly not what we're looking for. C says that this book has been widely reviewed and it hasn't received even one review that was hostile. So it hasn't received even one hostile review. Therefore, we're going to go ahead and conclude the opposite that therefore so far all the critics have loved the book. Since none of them hated it, it must be that all of them loved it. Does that sound familiar? Does that sound like we're jumping from one extreme to the next? It couldn't have been X, so it must have been the opposite of X, right? That's exactly what we're looking for. They didn't hate it, which means therefore they must have loved it. Well, that's not necessarily true. They could have been neutral. They could have thought it was okay. There are all kinds of things in between writing a hostile review and loving the book. You could have just been neutral on it. So this is exactly what we're looking for. It's exactly the same flaw. And it's a little sneaky because structurally, it's not exactly the same as our original paragraph. But the important thing is that it has the same flaw. And that flaw is that there's evidence that something is not X, so therefore, 
it must be the exact opposite of X, right? There's evidence that they don't have hostile feelings toward this book, right? They don't hate the book, so therefore they must love the book, right? That's exactly the same flaw as the original paragraph. The original paragraph said, Devin is showing us evidence that he's not my friend, therefore he must be my enemy, right? C says the reviewers are showing that they don't hate the book, therefore they must love the book. It's exactly the same thing and therefore it's flawed in exactly the same way, so C is co the correct answer to this question. D doesn't seem to connect to what we're looking for. D says that a decision to develop the northern border of the town logically implies that it would be equally acceptable to develop the southern, eastern, or western borders. I'm not sure why that would be, right? That's like saying a decision to do one thing implies that it would have been just as logical to do three different things. So I don't even know why that would be. That doesn't really seem to make sense. But at any rate, the argument concludes by saying, so therefore it's possible that at least one of these other borders, southern, eastern, or western, will also be developed. So I don't really see the resemblance to the original argument in D, right? Because we're looking for an argument to say something is not X, so it must be the opposite of X. In this case, we're not saying that it's not north, so it will be south. We're saying it's north and it may also be south or west or east, right? We're developing north and we may also develop one of these other borders. So structurally, it doesn't really seem to match the flaw that we're looking for. The logic of the argument is totally different. It doesn't really seem to make sense, but it doesn't seem to not make sense in the same way that the original argument didn't make sense. So therefore, D is definitely wrong. E is a flawed argument, but not in the same way as the original stimulus. E says that if X, then Y, but not X, so not Y. Now, you know that that's a flawed argument if you've done a bunch of these LSAT questions with me. We know that that's a classic flawed conditional logic argument, right? If something, then something else. If everyone were an author, poet, or academic, then society would come crashing to some sort of halt. But that if part of the statement is not true, right? Most people are not poets or authors and there aren't that many academics. So the if is not true, but that doesn't mean that our society will not come crashing to a halt. Just because if X, then Y doesn't mean if not X, then not Y. Meaning maybe something else will cause our society to come crashing to a halt other than this, right? That's like saying, if it's raining, then it must be cloudy. Well, therefore, since it's not raining, it must not be cloudy. That's not true. It could be cloudy even if it's not raining, right? In this case, just because this one thing, if this were true, that would cause the society to come crashing to a halt, doesn't mean if it's not true that the society won't find some other reason to come crashing to a halt. At any rate, none of this really matters because it's not flawed in the same way that the original stimulus is, right? The original stimulus was flawed because it proved that something was not X and therefore concluded that it must be the opposite of X, right? Devin is not a friend, so he must be an enemy. That's not what E is doing. We're not jumping from one extreme to the next. We're simply making a conditional logic flaw. We're saying if X, then Y, not X, therefore not Y. So that is a classic textbook LSAT flaw, but it's not the one that we are looking for on this question. If you found this video useful, don't forget to hit subscribe. And for thousands more clear LSAT explanation videos, go to masterlsat.com.